Hey everybody, Diecast International says Pontiac. So be it. In 1959, designers at Pontiac felt the car looked like a football player in ballet shoes. Their words, not mine. They kicked the tires front and back out a little over two inches on each side and the wide track was born. Pontiac rode that slogan into the 80s. This particular casting is a representation of the 1965 Bonneville, the wide track full-size offering in that year. It's considered a fourth generation Bonneville and helped Pontiac win Motor Trends Car of the Year Award. The casting entered the Hot Wheels main line in 2003 and was last produced in 2017. This particular issue is a 2013 release uh, in a series called Graffiti Rides. If I recall, I got it while purchasing something else. I added it to an eBay sale from the same shipper in order to make the shipping more palatable. I think I paid 99 cents for it, and honestly, that's about what it was worth. It certainly scores a 9.5 on the Hot Wheels Ugly scale. Ugly paint, ugly tampo, ugly wheels, and it's a damned low rider to boot. I kicked around a few ideas on what to do with it, and while I was removing chrome from the chassis, it broke right where the front axle crosses the plastic. It was probably a mixed blessing because I wanted to lift it up anyway. One thing I did was grind out the fender skirts. I don't like them in real life, and I don't like them on die cast. Except maybe Cadillacs. Yeah, Cadillacs with skirts are okay. I decided to do a polish and make it into a red line. One of the things I did after I made the repairs, fill in the front and rear axle areas with JB Weld for strength and also so I can lower the axles to change the stance of the car. Get yourself some wee drills. I'm using the 3D printed bearings that Jim Silva generously shared with the community and a straight pin to make my axles. I started my polish and the further I got it became more apparent that the surface was too imperfect. The hood and roof had a ton of little pits that would require me to take off too much material, so I opted to go for a base coat instead. The windshield is not painted, it's tinted and gauzied. That's a word, right? Gauzied? At any rate, if you look inside, you can see the light coming through. In a way, the window color decided the color of the car. Uh, when you tint a plastic window like this, you tend to see a hint of the original color around the edges. By painting the car orange, that becomes less obvious. The paint is my typical Duplicolor primer and base coat, followed by Tamiya Clear, red and yellow in equal quantities with some Tamiya Clear smoke to darken it to create this nice burnt orange. It's tough to see, but the bottom of the casting was painted with straight red from the midpoint down. The wheels are from Bright Vision. The back bumper suffered a chip that I kind of recreated with uh, CA glue and shaped with my Dremel. It's unfortunate that the break in the casting has caused it to sit so poorly and try as I might, recreating the back bumper went about as well as I could expect, I guess. Uh, so for Diecast International, a Pontiac. I hope you enjoyed the project. This is Time Rider, and I'll leave the light on for you.